Hello everyone, welcome back to Naughty Angry. Today the plan is pretty simple. I'm gonna take a quick drive to Tesco's to try and get some herring or mackerel or whatever I can find. And then I'm gonna drive on down to Felix Zoo, um, have a little fish there until the tide goes out. Then I'll migrate back to the river and do a bit of foraging. So yeah, let's see how it goes. Right, we're just pulling in at Tesco's. I'm gonna go see if I can find some uh, uh, mackerel or herring or something just from the fish counter or even on the reduced, just because I've only got ragworm and something that could potentially be a ray bait. Uh, would be perfect. Payment accepted. Right, and on to Felix Day. Bottom hook through the bottom. Have it up showing like that. Now you need to do it once and get your bait elastic. Make sure you don't go over the hook like I just did. Then wrap it round a good few times like that. So a nice bit of Bait showing like that, the hook point nice and clear. Slide your other hook down, which is the pinnel hook. Go a few times over. And I just like to go once through, and then back through again like that. We have nice bait. See you later, nice meeting you mate. I was literally just having a look through the bag, see how much <coughs> ragworm my mate had left me. And it is, well, I have all that lot. And that was the half bag. Then I've got another bag. And what could, look, yeah, another two bags in there. Must be a best part of two pounds of rag. So I'm certainly gonna set up another rod with another three hook flapper a three hook boom rig even because i think i'm going to need it try not to leave any kind of baited hooks unattended or well, not try to just don't Yeah, 
this one and go straight up central. Fish on. Yeah, I do. Nothing big. Hope it doesn't come off with this huge wave on the way in. It's fighting me. What have we got? I think we've got a double shot of white in. First off, a little fiddler. Absolutely minute. Second of all, more. Second one, more medium sized whiting. Reasonably big bit of surf at the moment, so it's making it quite difficult to tell what's biting and what's uh, not. Right, apologies, I missed the bite. I was on a sorting out my big rod. Just quickly noticed it. And we have a little dab. And on the bottom, a little whiting. Go get them back. This is just to come fish here for a bit and then uh, 
foraging in the river on the way down, so... Yeah, definitely got enough on the other rod. Let's see what you are then. Nothing big is the answer. I could see it before it went to the surf, it's a tiny little whiting. No, it's a whiting and a dab. An even tinier dab. Get dab and pin whiting. Nice kind of chunk of meat, the hook point showing like that. That's all you need. Is a slightly better sized dab. Not a massive dab, but you know, that's reasonable actually. Not too bad for a dab. Sometimes you get them in the tiddly, but still not massive, but a bit better than before. I know quite a few people have seen documentaries, but if you haven't, flatfish are quite cool. They start out their life like any other fish. And then, weirdly, one of their eyes migrates to the other side of their head. And instead of growing like into a normal shape like that, like most fish, they suddenly just start going like that. Basically, it helps them being bottom feeders, so they can scavenge on the bottom for things like the ragworm and the lugworm that I just called it on, whilst being able to look up and keep an eye out for predators. Cool little bit of evolution, that. Right, so with the pulley, pulley panel, one of the cool things about it is, is sometimes what you don't want is your weight dragging along the bottom as you catch a fish, because it can catch into a snag, particularly with these. Uh, arms, whatever you call them, that can get snagged and you lose the fish. Cool thing about a pen foot pulley panel is if you catch a fish which is heavier than the weight, what that would do is as the fish takes the weight, the weight will go up in the air like that. So it stays off all the snags, and you can catch it. Also, usually it's better if you have like one of the Gemini kind of a clip down the spatter tech things on the rig, but you still use a simple weight like that and keep the bait streamlined to help you cast out further. I 
past that. Well, the light's starting to fade, so I don't think I'll be too much longer down here because I've got a very powerful head torch, but at the back, because it's so powerful, the battery only lasts a short while. And I want to be able to see clearly what I'm doing while I'm foraging in the river. So probably have a couple more cars and then we'll head down and try and find some cockles, oysters and uh, mussels. Very, very small dam. An absolute fact central. Right up with one last load of ragworm then better head off. Let's see if there's anything on. Just see a couple of little nibbles earlier. I was just clutching the other rod. That would be a no or something very small. Something actually. It's another tiny flatfish. God, this is like a flatfish utopia, this is. If you look at them, you can actually see, you can kind of see your fingers going through. They almost look like see-through, the small ones. And if you look carefully there, you can actually see its stomach. Obviously still got the ragworm hanging out its mouth. But yeah, another little fish. Oh. Right, let's pack in and go get the rest of this uh, video done. All right guys, is that easy? Bag, rods, the one big rod. Pick it all up. Oh. No gash, no nothing. There's actually bins just down there. At most marks you go to, there'll be bins. Make sure you take your stuff with you. It's really not that difficult. Right, on to the next bit of the video. One, two, three. And off we go for a bit of foraging. Definitely seen worse spots.
Right, let's see what we can or can't find. There we go. Much better. Nice oyster. About the perfect eating size, actually. Sometimes you can get them much bigger and they'll taste a bit cruddy. Always just check that you can't open them. That's good. Uh, if they open easily or you find them open, do not eat them because it means they're uh, already dead, in which case they can give you <laughs> a very bad tummy, if not worse. Yeah, dead. And here, there's a few potential cockles. Now with cockles, Sometimes the shells can be completely looking like they're apart together and you just push them apart and you realise there's nothing in them. Sometimes you do it and you go, ooh, yay, my luck's in. In this case, no. No. And no. Right, we'll keep trying. It's one small cockle that won't open, so that one's nice and low. But it's absolutely tiny, so I might put it back. Plenty of shellfish here, though. Right, just here. Just sticking out the water here. Let's have a little oyster. This guy's tiny, so I'm gonna put him back where I found him. Too small meat wouldn't be worth it. Even though some of the small ones have fantastic meat, I prefer a tiny bit bigger than that. Yeah, I think. Tiny bit better size. Yeah, I'll keep him. Not massive, but just about good enough for me. I'm gonna go out and see a few more oysters. One over there. Ah. One here. They'll quite often just sit like this. And then uh, as the tide comes over them, the shells will open up slightly and they'll filter feed. It's another oyster. In the bucket you go. Ideally, I'd like to find a few more things other than just oysters. I know up towards, I don't know if you can see them, about there there's a couple of islands, I just don't know how deep it goes. Actually, it looks quite shallow. I'm going to take my fork, what I'm doing is just, I can, as long as I can see the bottom and I can see that it's clear to walk, I can see other people have been coming out here anyway, you can see the footprints. So I'll follow Places where I know it's fairly safe. Oh, fantastic! We have a little, we've got a couple of little cockles there attached to a rock. But there we have a nice mussel as well. Right, another thing to add to the bag. See the amount of shells here of just different kind of cockle shells. There's tons of them everywhere. That one's not alive. Oh hello. Ah, nuts. I'll keep looking. Right. I think if I have a look here. What I quite seem to be often finding is actually a small rock. You can see they're actually attached to each other. That's the rock. That's the cockle still standing. And as you see, because it's attached to it, I can't actually pull it apart. I mean, it's just good and alive. There's another muscle. In the bucket you go. Oh, look at this beauty of an oyster. Just attached to a little rock there. Just attach itself to this tiny little rock here. It's a nice oyster that is. Got four oysters. Got one, two, three, four oysters, three mussels, and a cockle so far. Find this down, you see. 
touch all these little rocks. Some baby little, there's some tiny baby cockles and clams. Put another nice mussel. Thank you. Let's have a look at you actually, because you're attached to something. That's a better one. Yeah. Another nice little cockle alive. Right, just down here, it's just sitting on this rock. That one looks alive. It's a little more stiff to get off, which usually means that it uh, <laughs> stand corrected. Never mind. Not quite um, that easily, but you've got like a little island here and a little island out there. Seems to be full of kind of rocky structures, which is exactly the kind of thing I'm looking for. As you can tell, quite a lot of the mussels and the cockles like to attach themselves to rocks. And... So let's see what I can find on the first one. I'm looking down straight away. There's another oyster. I think that'll do for oysters now. I'll try and just find some more cockles and mussels and then uh, that'll be good to go. Because the temperature's dropping and there's a bit of a breeze and sticking my bare hands in the water starting to give a good bit of wind chill just want to get enough for a nice good old catch and cook all i'm doing is just scanning from my hidden watch just looking for any kind of features where you can see stuff stuck together and that's a good sign of either a cockle or a mussel you can see the amount of shells like that of cockles are absolutely everywhere some lovely nice big oysters all kind of clamped onto this rock. I've got enough oysters though so I'm just gonna look for a few more cockles and mussels. Now I think that'll do me. So I'm gonna put one of my smaller ones back and take another one. There we go. Perfect. So cockles off it. And look for another day. Oh. There we go, got it off. Right, I've got mussels, oysters and cockles now. And now my hands are officially frozen. So I'm gonna head back to the car, get some gloves on, and then I'll show you what you need to do with these. Yeah, I've got cockles, oysters, Muscles. So, I'm going to show you what's a really, really important thing while you're getting any kind of shellfish, especially if it's in kind of any estuaries or anything like that. Um, it, it's you really do have to do this, or else you can come very badly ill. So, because shellfish are filter feeders, they will take whatever's in the water around them, and obviously that will then go into their meat. So, we think about estuaries, which are going to have farmers' fields. You can have stuff like fertilizers, anything that goes into rivers, I'll let you use your imagination. Um, yeah, so basically you don't want to be eating that. So what you need to do is get uh, a cleaner water supply. And fill it up so all the shellfish are submerged. Then you need to work out the exact amount of um, rock salt or sea salt that you need to put in make it like a natural habitat for them. Right, I'm going to leave it another 24 hours just because I want to be very safe because I'm off fishing again tomorrow and I don't want to be sat on a beach or something goes wrong. So yeah, I'll ease up tomorrow before I go fishing or maybe take them with me and do a catch a cook on the beach but yeah I'll show you them again tomorrow. If you're just joining me, back in my ways again because I'm going out fishing with my doggy. Just having a little father son picnic before we go. And I am going to cook up those cockles, oysters, and mussels that I found with one of my new presents that I got for Christmas. Fandango thing. 
So, I've just got one more in the bucket. Just taking all the mussels and cockles out of the bucket. Even just the oysters, because I'm going to do them separately. somewhere. How you doing Tommy? He's got quavers, dairy milk buttons and an easy peeler. So a bit different. Now all I'm going to do with all of these is I'm going to put some fresh water, fresh, fresh water, some tap water in it. As that boils, all the shell should open. If any don't open, or already open at this point, do not eat them. So what my plan is for that? Choo choo, well done. Choo choo. <laughs> We're just a... Uh, the river literally runs parallel to the train line here, so every time the uh, train goes past, he tries saying shoot, shoot. Um, but yeah, uh, so my plan is when that water boils and hopefully all the shells open. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> well, once the shells uh, open up, I'm going to take the meat out and then I'm going to literally just put some butter, melt some butter in there, and I've got some garlic and lemon. Uh, I'm just going to put in there. That's a loud crunch and kind of, yeah, see what it turns out like. I think they're pretty much all open now. Another couple of minutes. Any that aren't open by that point, um, I'll discard. Ones like this which haven't opened, make sure you get rid of. So if you try to crack them open and eat them, you will be ill. I'm right, just going to take all the meat out and just put give that a little rinse out and we'll chuck it back in there with something. Uh... Right, what I'm going to do? Double the butter. With lemon. Bit of garlic. Some pepper. Salt. I'm just going to literally put that on for. Two minutes again just to let the uh, butter melt. Perfect. Right, that should eat. Now for a little taste test. Mmm. That's, that's lovely. <laughs> no, I'm not going to give one to you, Tommy. Hope you can like it. Oops. <laughs> Is that funny? Anyways, if you've enjoyed watching the video, um, please hit like and subscribe. It really helps us out. I'm now literally going to take Little Man home, then I'm going to head off to hopefully get you another video. I hope you get that edited and out too soon. So thank you very much for watching. And until next time, take it easy.